Guys, it is working. Welcome back to another video here from the Off-Grid Garage. Afternoon, after... It is after... Definitely after lunch. It is actually evening. Good evening and welcome back to another video here from the Off-Grid Garage in sunny Australia. Thank you very much for all your comments, suggestions and solutions for my last video where I asked for help setting up the CAN bus situation on the Raspberry Pi. Thanks as well for all your emails you have sent. I have read them all and I have replied to most of them already. But there are so many. Yeah, as you have seen, I have managed to connect the Zeplos BMS to the Venus OS from Victron. And in this video, I want to show you how exactly this all works together. And I found the problem with the CAN hat and the Raspberry Pi. It is actually very, very simple to do all that, thanks to Kevin Windram. Yeah, this is one of these guys who... Kevin is one of these amazing people out there who is publishing solutions for free on GitHub or, or GitHub, whatever you want to call it. Okay, here on Kevin's website, we can see all the projects he is working on. One of them is the setup helper, which we have used in the past. And now we will have a look at the VE CAN setup. And this is the solution many of you have sent me via email. And of course, of course, I have followed this procedure before, but I could not get my CAN adapter to work with that. Okay, so I have now reinstalled Venus OS Large on my SD card here in the Raspberry Pi to get rid of all the traces of the driver for the CAN adapter. You can see there's nothing installed anymore. It's a fresh installation. And the first thing you want to do is, as always, when we do modifications, we have to gain root or super user access on the Raspberry Pi. So highlight this line, click and hold the right cursor, and then we get super user access. We set our password, password, don't tell anyone. And then we need to start our program called PuTTY. Or if you work on Linux or Apple, iOS, you can use just your console and log into the same IP address oh, as your Raspberry Pi has, which then doesn't work because you also have to enable SSH on LAN. <laughs> 10, 0, 0, 2, 11. There we go. So we log in as root with the password we have just set and we have now root access to our Raspberry Pi. And then we go back to Kevin's website and we need to download and install two packages before we can run the actual setup and configuration for our CAN adapter. So the first thing is the actual software and driver for the CAN adapter. So we copy this line here to a right click paste. It's downloading. Done. And the second one is just renaming the folder. Copy, right click, enter for execute. This is all done. And then we go a little bit further down. And here's the second package, which is the setup helper. As you may remember, we had Kevin on the show here before with the shutdown button for the Raspberry Pi. Because as per default, the Raspberry Pi and the Venus OS doesn't come with a shutdown just a reboot function and Kevin was so kind to program an actual shutdown button for that. So um, if you haven't seen that, I'll link the video down below as well. And for the shutdown button as well as for other of his projects, we need the setup helper, which we just download and install here. That is done. And the second line, right click, Enter. And now we come to the actual configuration of our CAN adapter and we need to execute the setup, which we just copy this line down here. Go back into our console, right click, enter. And now we are in the configuration of the CAN adapter and it gives us all the options now here. And we need to do two things in here. We need to add an interface and we need to install this interface. So two step installation. So the first thing is to add an interface, which is A. So we type in A, enter. And now you get all the options of different CAN adapters you can actually add to your Raspberry Pi. If you have one of these adapters here, which I've shown you before, you need to select um, option nine in here. Yeah, this is the WaveShare Head 12 megahertz crystal. 
But I have now installed the isolated double can head here on the Raspberry Pi. Even we are using only one can adapter here. I have installed this one because, well, I'll tell you in a second. All right, so for me, the option is here number 11, which is the WaveShare two channel isolated CAN bus head. And we want to activate channel one here. So I type in 11, press enter. And now it's asking the device requires overlay. And I say yes. And it does this all for me automatically now. Thanks to Kevin. All right, because I don't want to install any other adapter, I just click enter to go back to the main menu. And now in the second step, we need to install this software as well. So we need to click I. See, here's the install and activate interface. If you forget that, it doesn't work. But this was not my problem. Okay, we click I, enter. Okay, so now after choosing the install and activate function, we can see now that CAN0 has got the WaveShare two-channel isolated CAN bus installed. And down here are the information that the installation was successful. I'll show you the screenshot here of this other adapter. And you can see the line under information for CAN0. There it says no UDEF information available. And I didn't know how to fix this problem. So this adapter here actually did not install correctly on my Raspberry Pi for whatever reason. And I have tried the other one, the isolated can head, and it worked straight away, as you just saw. But for some reason, I cannot get this one to install. I'm not sure if this is a faulty hardware or if I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. If you get the information that no UDEF information is available after the installation, your can will not work. So after the configuration, now the only thing we need to do is a reboot of our system and then we are good to go. So, and this concludes the whole installation on your Raspberry Pi. It's only these two packages which you need to download and install and do the configuration depending on what kind of can head you have. And this is all you need to do for the can installation. So in the next step, we want to connect, we want to connect our BMS to the RS485 port. Yeah, I know, right? We are doing CAN setup, but we want to connect to the RS485. No, but because I want to show you. So I've connected the RS485 port of the battery to our computer and we start the, and we want to connect to our system. Yeah, there we are, connect, connect. Okay, so the next step is you want to make sure you hit this refresh button down here and have a look what kind of CAN protocol is set in your BMS. So standard is the pylon tag protocol. If you log in as admin, admin, you can actually change the protocol up here with this little can drop down menu. And you want to set this one to Victron. And say successfully changed the protocol, close. And if you do a refresh down here, you will see it changes from pylon to Victron and SMA, yeah? And then you can do a break. And then we want to disconnect the cable and connect this cable here to the CAN port on the left hand side. So I have connected only the high and low cable here to our CAN adapter, right? This is the light blue and the blue one. And this is per the instructions I have shown you in the last video as well. And before we connect our battery to the Raspberry Pi, we want to go back to our remote remote console, go into the settings, go all the way down to services. And we should now see a CAN bus option in here, which was not there before. So we have already successfully integrated the CAN port now into our Venus OS. And we go into the configuration of the CAN bus. And here in the first step, you need to set up your CAN bus profile, which is very important. And for the Zeploss BMS, you need to select the CAN bus BMS with 500 kilobit per second. So I'll tick this option here, and then it is set. Under network status, you can now see it is in a state of an error passive. But this doesn't mean there is an actual error. It only means it is passively monitoring errors. And we don't have any communication on the RX and TX here at the moment. 
here's the big moment. We want to connect our battery now to the can head. This is all plugged in. It's plugged into the battery on the other side. You can see the state has now changed from error passive to error active. So it's now actively monitoring the error state of your CAN bus. Well, and as you can see, there's no communication. There's no RX and TX here. But I have also read in forums that this is quite normal, that it doesn't show any activity here. It may show up later on. It could take a while, a couple of reboots and everything, until it shows you data here in this section. So what we are going to do now is we are going back into our main menu. And here we can see that we have an SH Energy BMS now connected to our system. And if we go all the way back to the console, we can also see that this one is our battery monitor now. So it uses the Seplos BMS with all its data as the battery monitor. You can see the state of charge, the voltage and the amps going in and out, and also the power which goes through the BMS. It is just a bit annoying that it doesn't recognize the Seplos BMS here, but we can override this by going into the BMS settings. And here we have again the voltage, the amps and the power. This is very similar to the BMSs we have connected to the Venus OS before. See, it shows us all the alarms here as well, which we can use later in Node Red, for example, history device. We need to go into device. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So connected, yes, CAN bus, SH Energy, and we can actually change the name here to C plus BMS. We hit enter. Now if we go back, it says C plus BMS. How good is that? Yeah, guys, and this is pretty much it. As you can see, even connecting a BMS via CAN bus is not much different to connecting one via the RS485 and um, these little adapters here we have seen in one of the last videos. So you can see the live values here, the voltage is actually moving around a bit, 0 0.27, 0 0.26. So we're getting live data here from the BMS. We are CAN bus now into the Victron OS. And this was always my main point to not just connect the inverter to a battery. I wanted to have these data available in Victron OS because now we can start the node red here on the Victron OS large and play around with this data. And for example, if the battery gets too hot, we throttle or stop charging until the battery cools down again. Which you certainly cannot do when you plug in your battery to an inverter only. Okay, now I want to show you something interesting. I am now, hang on, I am now connected back to the RS485 adapter here to the computer. And I've connected the big battery with the RS485 BMS. Jeez, it's getting really complicated. So we have to change our baud rate down to 9600, click on connect, and it connects to the BMS, just fine, right? If you go down to the BMS information and click on the refresh button, there's nothing happening. It doesn't give you any information about the BMS, nothing. Even if you try to change the protocol for the BMS from Victron to Pylon or anything else, it cannot execute the command. And then it fails eventually. So this BMS has no CAN communication at all. I'll show you something else. So I have now connected our Raspberry Pi via CAN to the big battery here. I need to connect this to the can port of course but here as we can see in the venus os nothing there's nothing showing so they really produce two different bmss one rs485 one can and they're not communicating with each other so the can port on this bms is basically dead it doesn't do anything that is ridiculous i'm not sure what the reason behind that is it doesn't make much sense to me Okay, so I'm just taking off this can head here and put the other one back on. This one here. Okay, so this sits perfectly on the Raspberry Pi. And now we connect the cables back and see if we can get this one working as well. Okay, so I have now reinstalled the other can head as you have just seen and we are back in the configuration of the adapter software. 
and now we select number nine here because this is the wave share head 12 megahertz crystal number nine and you wanna yes i want to thank you very much i don't want to do anything else and i want to i install it see and now it says again no udf information available and i don't know why that is with this adapter so i don't want to reboot um we're going back in and we do another installation still nothing d display see it says here ken zero wave share had 12 megahertz crystal it is all installed and good press the installation again see i've got no luck installing this adapter for some reason it is not working okay guys so far this video from tonight i hope i hope you enjoyed it i leave all the information down under the video and on my website as well i have linked both this adapter here this can head as well as the other one which doesn't work for me but works for many other people so maybe it's just faulty i don't know i link this all on my website as well if you want to buy one of these and play around with it and i've got the communication now set up for all my bms's basically with either the rs485 to usb adapters here directly to the raspberry pi or with the isolated can head here this is all working fine now and we now have all the details in the venus os again not in the inverter but in the venus os which is very important i think for our future setup programming configuration of our battery 3.0 okay guys again thank you very much for all your comments all your help all your assistance all your emails in regards to that this is all now sorted and we can finally move on because i have something very interesting here in the background which i want to test in the next one one and a half weeks so stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Look what we have achieved so far. Amazing. Thank you very much to everyone. Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Okay, before you go, I just did a restart of the Raspberry Pi and did the installation again without doing anything else. And it now has the information, the UDEF information ready to go here. So it seems to work with this adapter as well. I just plug in the cable and see if we can get any information in the actual... Yeah, it is It is now visible in the Venus OS as well. There it is, C++ BMS. Gives us all the information and we've got live update. I don't know, the adapter works all of a sudden done a restart installation again and it works now if it doesn't work for you just keep going repeating the whole restarting installing restarting installing until it works the big question is now how reliable is this actually working now do you want to rely on such an adapter to control your whole system